Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to do a video talking about the comic book industry and blacklists. And I know for the longest time, several comic book journalists tried saying that blacklists didn't exist. The truth of the matter is that blacklists absolutely exist. Editors do talk. They decide, you know, who they want to hire, who they won't hire. They talk amongst themselves. There absolutely positively is a whisper network. This has been proven, uh, made up of a lot of editors from different publishers like Marvel and IDW and Oni Press. And the thing is, is a lot of these people slip and say stupid stuff publicly. Yes. Just proving that there actually are blacklists right. in comics. And uh, we had another case of this happening the other day. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody slipped and said that uh, they're not going to hire you if you're into AI art. And this person uh, actually worked for Skybound, is the acquisition editor for Boom Studio, Image Comics, Marvel, and their resume, right? So this is a person who's a decision maker as to who to hire. Now, it got retweeted by several other uh, people in comics, including other editors, including Heather Antos, mm -hmm. who has made comments before about not hiring certain kinds of people. And look, you're allowed to work with or not work with whoever you want to work with, but don't say that there's no blacklist. Well, not just that. If you're working for their company, I don't think the company likes that you're going out there saying, "Hey, I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna hire you. I'm gonna blacklist you." Yeah, and 95 percent of the time, it's a political thing. Now, in this case, it's about AI art, which is a, a hot topic. You know, um, I mean, I think AI, AI art replacing comic book artists is kind of shit. I'm not going to lie. That being said, I wouldn't have posted that publicly if I was the acquisitions editor for a publisher. Yeah. So, yeah. Because you're submitting that you blackball people. You just submitted it. And it's not just this. It's not just this case. There are multiple instances over the last couple of years where we've had editors for Marvel uh, come out and say that they will not work with you. If you have the wrong political beliefs, wrong pronouns, you have the wrong pronouns. You were you voted for uh, Trump. There was one that actually, oh he oh this guy he right here look uh, he's doing anti-Trump stuff. Shocker! Shocker! It's like, like, these guys are like you know they're like copy and pasted of each other. It really is funny. Uh, but yeah, this is a this is a kind of the worst kept secret in comics that at least for the last five to eight years, comics has been very gate kept. Uh, there are certain people with certain uh, uh, opinions that are in charge of comics. And really, though, they don't really have much control over you. They don't really have much control in general, especially Heather Antos. From my understanding, she's gotten – she keeps leaving jobs and going – and, and that, it's not like she feels upwards. She keeps feeling downwards. And then, you know, and, and from my understanding, too, the Whisper Network people, a lot of them, people are sick to death of them. And they're avoiding them like the plague. So, yeah, industries are small. People talk. Don't be a dick or a smelly vagina. I'm not judging. But you know what? You know, practice what you preach. Yeah. So let's let's talk about this and why you don't need to be afraid of these people, especially if you want to do comics now, because there really is nothing left to be blacklisted from. What are they going to do? Take away the, the job that doesn't pay you? Yeah, I mean, I put this up when I heard about it yesterday. I'm like, oh, no, you wouldn't want to be blacklisted from an industry that's notorious for not paying its workforce, would you? You might be forced to take a steady, decent-paying gig with health insurance or something. Uh, you might not have to crowdfund your work computer. You might actually be able to pay your rent. Oh, wasn't that her? That was her. She yeah, had yeah, yeah, you know. Heather Rontos, yeah. She yeah, had people, people see that and they talk. Um, and so... You're I'm, winning in life. So my, my thing is like, what the hell are you afraid of? What are you afraid of? You're afraid you're not going to get a gig uh, working in comics, maybe busting your ass for a couple of months to not get paid for six to nine months. To have to crowdfund your work computer. To have to crowdfund your living expenses, and that's, your that's, health insurance. And that's the editor. Uh, you know, I mean, this is crazy. So we'll, we'll talk about this. This is just like... This is such a non-industry. The comic book industry it just blows is, my mind. It's, it's crazy. No other industry operates like this. We walked away from doing comics with, with an agent and everything because it, there was no money. It wasn't no. worth it. You, they were like giving you like a, a very shitty low advance, and that's supposed to last you for three years until you get the book done. And you still have to work your other job anyway, and they get to control everything. So just work your job and then still do your comics on the side and do it your way. So we're going to talk about this. Uh, before we get to it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. Uh, almost 283,000 subs. Thank you so much for the support. Um, speaking of support, Crimson Wren did, between Kickstarter and Indiegogo, uh, did over $110,000, which we weren't sure how this one was going to do, given it is more of a... I wouldn't say a kid's book, but it is more of an all-ages type yeah. adventure story. It's not a superhero comic, but uh, the support has been amazing. This is 
more than we probably would have made off of a traditional publishing deal. Right. And we're not trying to be like braggy assholes no, about it no. or anything like that. I mean, it's still open, isn't it? It was supposed to be closed. Yeah, it was supposed to be closed. I need to write it again. But they didn't close it yet. Like, yeah. But um, we are trying to be like that. That's not our intention. Our point is we're only showing this as an example because I know a lot of people, you know, go way higher than this. A lot of people go way lower than this. My point is, is that you can do it and control it yourself and you don't have to have people like, you know, mm, well, if you don't aren't the right kind of person or if you don't say what I want you to say or you don't vote the way I want you to vote or if you, you know, we're green on a Friday in July, I'm going to not hire you and blackball you from the industry because we in the Whisper Network girlfriends decided. If you uh, have a penis. <laughs> so we... When we first started talking about this kind of stuff on the channel, um, we had a conversation because we know how catty comics can be. Now, it wasn't as bad then as it got later. I don't know, though, because why we started doing these in general and why you got involved, like, looking into what was going with Comicsgate and stuff like that was because you wrote an article on our old Disney blog that we were on. That, yes. That's a whole other story that yeah, was taken from us. Um, Neon wrote an article on there about what's up with Marvel – um, and ask some questions about, this looks really kind of bad. What's going on? Why are the numbers sucking so much? What, what the heck? And not knowing anything about Comicsgate. All our friends, all these friends we had in comics suddenly started blocking, blocking you. And like, you know, and, and wouldn't talk to you anymore. Yeah, it was really weird. So this is, this is about 2017. I put this article up because it, you know, it became apparent that something was up with Marvel Comics. The sales were down. There were mainstream articles on it. I really wasn't paying attention to it we so were going much. We Disney all the time. Yeah, we're, but it started to, you know, it came across my radar because, again, we had like the Hollywood Reporter and other major outlets commenting on the failure of Marvel Comics. And at that point, I had stopped reading Marvel Comics for a number of years. And I was like, why are they switching all the characters up? Why are they doing this? And uh, that eventually led me to YouTubers because the biggest grievance with a lot of these people was these YouTubers that were calling this out. They're just a bunch of Nazis. Yeah, but you They're weren't even just... saying anything about the YouTubers. You just no. asked a simple question that as a, somebody up? watching was going on. And all and we had a lot of friends in comics, yeah. both in web comics and pro comics, because we've been around for a long time. And suddenly people who, who we knew in person or who, you know, we knew you got gigs for, all of a sudden we're, we're unfollowing you and blocking you and different things. We're like, what the hell is going on? My editors at IEW, which again, I've said repeatedly, I have never had a bad experience with the editors, the editorial at IDW. But once I started questioning the, the status of the comic book industry, the state of the comic book industry publicly, as somebody who worked in comics, I was literally getting blocked. I was getting blocked. Um, I had people unfollow me. I'm like, I did not realize. But your editor, didn't she block you? Yes. And we're I, like, I we were just asking a question. We didn't know anything about it. And that, you know what? All that did, and this is, I think it's the same for a lot of people, was all that did was make us be like, oh, hell no. Hell no. And now we're like, okay, fine. If you're going to be this way, we're going to call you out on it. Yeah, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna name names. But, Made your own enemies there. But she worked at IDW, and again, I never once had a bad. No, you always got along with her great. I actually thought she was great. I know when they had to cut people loose, she actually called and told people. The, yeah, she was. You know, she was. All, she was pretty. Very, very you know, nice. solid. But uh, w it turned out she was part of the Whisper Network, so IDW was in lockstep with Boom, was in lockstep with people at Marvel, was in lockstep. With, so all these publishers, all these people got themselves into an editorial position, decision-making position, and then they would all kibitz amongst themselves about who they were going to keep out of but the, comics. But the joke's on them. We left already because there was no money in it. Why are we going to kill ourselves to maybe not get paid? And you that, know? And that's the thing. That That's the punchline. get punch paid line. like shit, too. That's the punchline to all of this. All of this drama for years, all of this hatred thrown, you know, the way of certain creators, even if... Look, there are some there are some creators out there that have some pretty spicy hot takes. I wouldn't say some of the stuff they say, right? But there are other people that are very, very polite, very nice people that are just like, hey, we have to find another way to do comics because the mainstream is just not wanting, you know, to have anything to do with us anymore. They haven't done anything wrong. And they've tried to get their campaigns taken down. They've tried to get them banned from comic book conventions. They've, so all this drama... For something that's worthless. Like, you, you basically, I mean, it's just insane. It reminds me of a dog with a bone. Like, I don't want your bone. Your bone's disgusting. I have no, but the dog is so afraid you're going to take that bone 
then it will snarl, growl, do you know, be destructive. Anything it has to do to keep the bone. And then the reality is, is you don't want the bone. It has no value to you. It's the same thing with the mainstream comic book industry. Anymore, there's no value there. I mean, there really isn't. You, you can go, like I said, you can bust your ass working for these fly-by-night publishers that may or may not pay you. Uh, you can go to a comic book convention, sit there, and you may or may not make money. And even, I think people wanted to do it because they wanted to work for the main publishers because then you'd have a name established for yourself. People would know who you were. It would build a fan base. But at this point, the fan base, you know, usually doesn't, doesn't necessarily mean that the fan base is going to help you later. A lot of times, if you're labeled the wrong kind of person, uh, some of the, the fan bases won't even acknowledge you anyway. If you get outed or ousted, I don't want to say ousted because you don't have to do anything wrong. Just no. have the you know have you know have the wrong you know gender or be the wrong color or whatever. Mostly it. it and here's the thing. Uh, you know, originally drink it the wrong milkshake. Or drink the wrong milkshake. Originally, it started out as I believe. I don't. I don't think it was ever political. Originally, I think it started out as. These editors getting pissed off because people didn't like their comics. Uh, their friends were getting dunked on. Their work was getting dunked on. And then they had to have a reason to hate on these people. So, oh, look, they're Trump supporters or Trump adjacent supporters or just they're not, you know, virtue signaling. It always enough. blows my mind when they bring that up. Well, you don't like it because of Trump. It's like you do know that there are people who, um, you know, don't agree with you that aren't Republican, right? You do know that not every Republican likes Trump. You do know that not every Republican is white, straight, and male, right? No, you don't, because you're no. dumb. <laughs> you know? But it's beyond like that, really like, dumb. I mean, we we didn't vote for Trump. We got, I mean, we're moderate uh, Democrats, or we're moderate Democrats at the time. And now and, we're just like, you're awful shit. Yeah, and I'm like, we're, uh, our, our politics, honest to God, have not changed at all. And we used to be able to table next to people that were... Because we didn't care. Yeah, way more conservative than we were. You didn't talk about it. Way more liberal. Up until recently, you went to shows and you didn't know who people voted and it didn't fucking matter because you you weren't there for that reason. And I didn't care who you voted for. Trumpism and anti-Trumpism absolutely changed everything, though, because I remember one of the last shows we did, we actually had a, a friend of ours who, we, again, we tabled next to this person for years, started getting weirdly political. I remember the conversation getting weirdly political. And when that person thought I was defending Trump or defending Trump voters, and this is before the election, in any way I could see this look on her face like, you know, but it's so weird to see this change. And I've seen it in groups I belong to for years. I mean, there's there's a, a couple of Facebook groups that I've been on for like 15 years. And I've seen the, it, the shift go from, hey, let's, you know, all together dunk on Hollywood or dunk on stupid changes to fandoms to now if you criticize these uh, IPs making major changes, even though we were doing it before and it was cool, now it's somehow associated with Trumpism or Which something. Which is the stupidest it's freaking thing. freaking weird. Like, you can oh, you hate, hate so something and not vote for Trump. But anyway, um, here's the thing. And I'm going to tell you, regardless of the reason, regardless of why you know, you're not breaking into comics, you're not getting uh, you know, comics work, you're not being invited to conventions, whatever, you can still make a living in comics. You can actually probably, if your stuff is good – and you have a decent enough platform, you can make more money off of comics outside of the current mainstream industry. Yeah, so like this guy here is probably going to black blackball us from working for Boom, Boom Studios. Boom Studios, oh, oh my god! Damn, I you know ironically. One of the, the founders of Boom Studios wanted to work with us and put our webcomic on his site. But, you know, whatever. Yeah, and, um, and that person would go on, that particular person would go on to uh, threaten to blacklist somebody else right. from, from all the comic shops in the country. Right. Yeah. So I'm just like, oh, boy, I'm not going to get to work for Boom Studios because I called this person out. Oh, fucking well. And, I mean, they don't pay worse shit anyway. And if, they, and if Boom Studios wanted to make money, they'd hire us. Yeah. I don't care if that sounds arrogant. Yeah, we've actually defended Boom Studio with the crowdfunding thing because that's mm -hmm. the thing. They, they cater to these people, and then what happens is they'll turn on them on a dime. And, and we saw it with their uh, crowdfunders with Berserker and Power Rangers. They're like, how dare Boom Studios make money? Yeah, we this? went to their defense, but we'd yeah. be blacklisted probably because, you know, we're calling them out for stupidity. I don't give a shit. Yeah, I don't, don't care. I don't care. Um, but, yeah, I mean, in this case, it's AIR. That's fine. I would not announce that you're going to blacklist yeah, somebody. Yeah, I mean, I get the point. I given... also don't think AI art is a good thing. That being said, I wouldn't have publicly posted because now you're just basically admitting that you blacklist people. You know, we need to drive shitty people out of the industry. We're driving bad people out. Stephanie can go first. Yeah, and a lot of these people, you look into it, and they actually have, there's like some criminal element going on here, too, like Stephanie Cook. Oh, is that the one that? The embezzlement. The embezzlement, yeah. yeah. It's, I mean, it's crazy. Allegedly. 
Uh, and but so many of these people that were trying so hard to drive people out of the industry now are out there begging for money, and we've seen several of them. Uh, even you know some of these websites that were facilitating this are, are begging for money. Well, the now. one person, I forget who it was, they were at a Hamilton concert, and then they didn't have money to get back home after they bought Hamilton tickets, and they were begging people to give them money on, like, GoFundMe or something so they get they can get a ride back home. Yes. I'm like, wait, I'm wait like, a minute. You just went to wait Hamilton. Minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's like, I wanted to take the Cry kids to Hamilton. River. I wanted to take the kids to Hamilton. I couldn't afford to take the kids to Hamilton because it was, like, 300 to $900 a ticket. And that was in that was in Pittsburgh, and that was a couple of years after it was on Broadway. I'm like, how the hell much did now they did the ten dollar ticket thing? I don't think it was a ten. I think it was you know. But then the one person we actually helped them out. We actually gave them money because we felt bad because when we first started doing this, we were a hell of a lot more naive than we are now. Gave them money. Not only did we not get a thank you, but we got we got uh, blocked on Twitter. After I gave this, they didn't this, give the money back either. They never gave the money back either. This is the kind of quality of people that you know are running the industry. So yeah. I don't know why anybody's surprised when they aren't getting paid. But the, the point is, so what if they blackball you? I mean, so what? These people are going to be out. It's like a revolving door. They're in there now. They're not going to be there very much longer. I no. mean, like I said, Antos, she keeps good. She keeps getting downgraded every job she gets. She's, I believe, at IDW right now, which is oh, on, yeah. coasting on fumes. You're winning point. there. Yeah. But I'm just like, so they're going to be gone in a few years anyway. And just don't let them, you know, tell you can't do something. And, and why would you Why would you care? They're going to keep you out of the industry that is up. At, you know, everybody's complaining now because they're not getting paid. And we're talking like not just itty bitty publisher, publishers like Valiant. We're talking like, Marvel. you know, Marvel might yeah. be not paying people. Yeah. So you're, you're completely avoiding it. You know, a headache, honestly. Yeah. And... Like, how's this punishment? It's not. It's actually they're they're doing you a favor. It's like when someone's an asshole and they stop talking to you. It's like, oh, oh wow. Good. I don't have to deal with You're you anymore. You're punishing me. Thank God. All right. We got to wrap this yeah. one up. All right. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.